let's look at this set. The table given below gives the number of graduates who got employment in different fields and their average salaries in different years. We have this table. Now, in terms of understanding or interpreting this table, the only one thing that is critical here is look at this average monthly salary. What is given here is average monthly salary. As long as you know it is monthly salary, that is it. And then there is this extra note, percentage of graduates employed in different fields is rounded off to nearest integer, which is to say number of people in any of these domains will not be in decimals. Say, for instance, in 2030, total number of graduates is 650. And in finance, we have 17% of the people. 1% 1 of 650 is 6.5. 6.5 into 17 is 17 into 13 by 2. So 110.5. Total number of people will be 110.5. Either it is 110 people or it is 111 people, but it is not 110.5 people. Decimal count of people cannot be in decimal. That is what this uh, final line is indicating to us. Apart from that, there is nothing to interpret. It would depend on what the question demands of us for us to engage in calculation. First question, what was the approximate value of the absolute difference between the number of students who got jobs in marketing and those who got jobs in finance over the given period? Okay. So people who got jobs in marketing and people who got jobs in finance. One way of doing it or the standard way of doing it would be finding out 36% of 800, 48% of 650, 43% of 1100, 37% of 1200 and 32% of 1050. And then adding those numbers up, that gives you the count of people working in marketing. Next, you find no 12% of 800, 70% of 650, 23% of 1100, 19% 19 of 1200, and 32% of 1050. And then you find out um, by adding those numbers up, you get total count of people working in finance. And then you find out the difference between those two numbers and you can reach your answer. That is perfectly all right. But um, that is not how it is recommended. The recommended way would be, see, given that we are only looking for a difference of people, Instead of finding out 36% of 800 and 12% of 800 and then finding the difference, I would rather find out difference in percentage straight away. I have 24 here. I have 31 here. I have 20 here. I have 18 here. And I have 0 here. And I will only find out 24% of 800 plus 31% of 650 plus 20% 20 of 1100 and 18% 18 of 1200 and 0% of 1050. That way, one, it helps me eliminate 2016 from calculation entirely. Additionally, I only need to figure out the numbers once and simply add them up. Let us do this match. 24% of 800 is 192. 31% of 650. Now, 31% of 650, I don't know. But 30% of 650, I can find out it is 195. And 1% 1 of 650 will be 6.5. So, I will write them separately. 195 and 6.5. Next is 20% of 1100 is 1 fifth, so 220. And finally, 18% of 1200, so 18 into 12, so 216. And 0% 0 of 1050 is 0 only, so I don't need to worry. So I have to add up these four numbers. Again, don't add them up blindly. We can reduce our work. See, these numbers are very close to being 200, which is a nice number for us. This is 8 away, this is 5 away. So I will reduce this by 13. I will make this 203. Make this 200. Make this 200. And now see, I have a 200, 200, 200, 200. 800 I have already got. Then I have 20, 23, and 6.5. So 29.5. This is giving me a total of 829.5. Among the options, the closest one is, of course, option C, 830. Next question. In 2016, by how much approximately did the total salary in rupees thousands given to candidates employed in the field of finance exceed that to the candidates employed in the field of software? Okay. Pay attention to the wording of the question very carefully. Total salary in 2016. So we are no longer talking of monthly salary, we are talking of the entire annual period. So we also, we also need to finally multiply our answer by 12. And we are only looking for uh, differential in the salary received by the people in finance and the people employed in the field of software only in the year of 2016. So 32% employed in finance and I have 20% employed in software. 
So writing out the expression 1050 into 32 by 100 into the salary received by people 9810 into 12. This is the amount of money received by the um, uh, people employed in the domain of finance. Now, people who were employed in the domain of software, this much they had. I have to find out difference between these two numbers. And the difference has to be in rupees thousands. Right now, this is in absolute rupees. I have to find out the difference in rupees thousands. Okay. Things that I can do. I can get rid of one zero. 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 And get rid of one zero. I'm trying to keep the cancellation in the top expression and the bottom expression similar to each other as possible. So that now hopefully you can see I can take 105 out common. I can take 12 out common. I can also potentially take 4 out common. So 4 into 105. So I'll make it 420 into 12 this much i have out common so four gone this will become five four gone this will become eight so i have eight into 981 minus five into 864 this maths i have to do okay so i have 420 into 12 and in brackets we have <coughs> 19 into 8, 152. 1000 into 8 is 8000. 8000 minus 152 is 7848. 7, minus 5 into 864. Now multiplying something by 5 is simple. At the end of this number, add a 0 and then divide it by 2. So I'll get 4, 3, 2, 0. Okay. So, I have 420 into 12. Finding out the difference will be 8. Then 4 minus 2 is 2. 8 minus 3 is 5. And 7 minus 4 is this. Okay. So, I have 3, 5, 2, 8. Okay. Now, I need to remember this answer we are currently getting is in rupees. This answer that we are getting, this mathematical formulation that we are currently getting is in rupees. It would be very easy for us. Say if this question appeared in CAT, it would be very easy for us. We can simply use the calculator and get to the answer. But uh, these sorts of questions usually appear in NMAT, in SNAP. This is not a very CAT type question. So what do we do there? So now that I have this and I have to divide this by 1000. I have to divide this by 1000. Okay. What I would do is, what I would do is, I would engage in... See, I can do precise calculation also. That is not a challenge. But I don't want to do precise calculation. One, because I'm lazy. And second, because it is too cumbersome. How can I reduce my work? I need to get to a number which is a multiple of 4 and also a multiple of 25. So this 3, 5, 2, 8, I can reduce it by 3 or I can maybe even reduce it by uh, 28. This will not hugely impact my answer. Because the options are reasonably far apart, I can do this. This goes away, this goes away. And now my work is amazingly simple. Look at 12 into 35 is 420. And I have to multiply it by 42. So 42 into 42, if I'm doing, it will be 17640. My approximate answer is turning out to be 17640. Among the available options, the closest one to that is option A. So that should be the answer. This is one way of doing it. This is one way of doing it. I'll also showcase a second way of doing it. Also showcase a second way of doing it. Not, not the entire multiplication. How can I reduce the work and do it? This requires a little bit of understanding. So please pay attention. Now see, in 2016, in 2016, I have 32% here. I have 20% here. So can I say, look at the first, let's say there were only 100 people. The first 20 from finance and the first 20 from software, the difference in the salary obtained by them will be equal to 
1050 total count of people into 20% into the difference in salaries that they have got. So 981 minus 864 or 1170. Of course, into 12 we have to do. This is the difference in the salary received by 20% of the people who are employed in finance and 20% of the people who are employed in software. Additionally, the additional 12% that are employed in finance, the additional 12% that are employed in finance, their entire salary also contributes to the difference. So I can turn this into 9810 into 12. This will also lead me to the same answer. This will also lead me to the same answer. Let's check 0 and 0 gone, 0 and 0 gone. 0 and 0 gone, 0 and 0 gone. Now, take out 4 again. 420 into 12. This turns to 5. This turns to 3. 420 into 12. And we are left with 5 into 170. 5 into 170. So, 585 plus 3 into 981. 3 into 981. So 3000 minus 57. So 2943. So 420 into 12. Let us add this up. 3 and 5 adds up to give me 8. 4 and 8 add up to give me 2. 1 carried over. So I get 3, 5, 2, 8. Hopefully you see, this is the same formulation we had reached even last time. This is the same set of numbers we had reached last time. I am okay with doing either thing. None, neither of the methods are superior to each other. It is just that whatever strikes you earlier. And from here, we know I can approximate it by making it 0, 0. I need to divide this by 1000 because the answer was asked in rupees thousands. Cancel, 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 cancel. So I have 35 into 12, 420. I have to multiply this by 42. So I get 17640. My answer should be slightly higher than this because I've reduced 3528 to 3500. So slightly higher than this is only option A. I will reach that as the answer. Okay. Hopefully this second formulation also makes sense to you people. It is not, as in, it did not work wonders in this uh, iteration, but uh, in some other places, in other instances, it also reduces the work tremendously. Okay, now the third question. Which year registered the maximum percentage increase in the number of graduates over the previous year during the given period? Let's see, in 2013, there was a decline. So no worries, this is out. In 2014, the increase was a 450 on a base of 650. In 2015, the increase was a 100 over a base of 1100 in 2016 there was a decline so this is a fairly simple question option b clearly even by the eye test it's it is very clear 450 by 650 is greater than two thirds year and one by 11 is less than that and in 13 and 16 there was a decline in the number of students. so no worries this is a simple question question four in which year the average salary of graduates employed in the field of finance recorded the maximum percentage increase over the pre previous year during the given period. Now see for this question, although the mm, table gave me monthly salary, whatever was the percentage change in monthly salary, it will be the same percentage change in annual salary because all you do from monthly in all you do in order to get from monthly salary to uh, yearly salary is multiply by 12. So multiplication by 12 is not needed. So when we're looking at percentage increase over the pre previous year, all you need to do is find out the difference. This is only for people in the field of finance. Find out the difference divided by the previous year's number. So 5450, so I get 3, 0, and 9, 930 by 5450. This is the percentage increase in 2013. In 2014, we get how much? 701170 by 63. 
80. Next in 2015, the increase is again 70. Okay. 70. 1370 by 7550. And finally, in 2016, the increase is 90. 890 by 8920. Now, among these four fractions, we have to identify which is the largest fraction. Okay. Hopefully, right off the bat, you can say 2016 is out. 2016 is out. This is less than 10%. And each of these fractions are greater than 10%. So 2016 is out. Now we have to compare the first and the second fraction. Let's do the comparison mechanism. I'm unsure how many of us would know this comparison mechanism. But uh, if you do, wonderful. If you don't, probably you should go ask someone, as in ask your teachers how this works. The difference in the numerator is 7, so 240. The difference in the denominator is uh, 6340. 6380 minus 5450. The difference is 930. So no problem at all. Okay. So if I were to four times this, if I were to four times this, I'd get 960 by 37 less than 428. So 3720. Clearly, this is the largest fraction. This is the middling fraction and this is the smallest fraction. So this loses out. Now, we are only left with 2014 and 2015 data. Let us compare 1170 by 6380 with 1370 by 7550. I hope it is correct. 20 minus 2 seems right. Now, the difference in the numerator is 200. The difference in the denominator is 1170. Okay. So now, between these two fractions, this is definitely middling. Between these two fractions, I have to figure out which one is larger and which one is smaller. Okay. Let us check. Let us check. Right now, it is difficult for me to figure out. So what I'll do is I'll multiply this right fraction by 6 and get to 1200 by 6 times of so this is uh, 6000 and 1020. So 7020. Now the difference between the numerators is 30. The difference between the denominators is 40 and 640. Okay, so this is the smallest, this is the middling, this is the largest. So between these two, I know this is the smallest, this is the largest, which helps me rule out 2015 as the larger fraction. And the fraction that remains is option B, 2014, and that is the answer to this question. Now, the processing of this fraction comparison, I would, I mean, this takes up a lot of time, so I can't really get into details of that. But uh, wherever you're taking your coaching, go ask your teacher. They will tell you how this fraction comparison mechanism works. Wherein, I don't know the precise value of this fraction. I don't know the precise value of this fraction. I don't know the precise value of this fraction. Ruling out 890 by 8920, I'm sure everyone can do. But we may not know the precise value of these fractions. But we can compare and figure out which one is larger, which one is not larger. That will be all for this question. Thank you.